Band Helper 3.0 for iOS and 2.0 for Android is a major update, but is more focused on usability than new functionality. I've taken some of the important functions that users have a hard time finding and made them more visible, while also trying to make the navigation more consistent and intuitive throughout the app. If you're used to the old design, this might seem confusing at first, so I'm going to walk you through the changes now. And I'm showing the iOS version here, but everything you see is the same in the Android version. For those of you who are still using Setlist Maker, most of what you see here is the same, but there are a few differences and a few things that Setlist Maker doesn't support. Let's start by entering the repertoire module and selecting a set list. And instead of the set list opening right away, you now see this menu. You can view the set list with any of the layouts shown above this divider line. And the editing and sharing functions are below the line. Editing a set list has two components the set list details, like the name, duration, etc., and the set list songs. And these now have two separate buttons. Since the edit pages for both buttons now appear in the right column, this gives you more room to see your song details when editing the songs. The third button here is for the setlist share page, which is the same as before, and you can tap the back button to return to the menu. To view a setlist, you first have to choose a layout to view it with. This list includes all the layouts that match your device's screen size and orientation. If you rotate your device, the list will update to show the layouts that match the new orientation. This should avoid some confusion about layouts that are meant for landscape versus portrait orientation. When you select a layout, the setlist view appears. And if you want to change layouts, you can tap the back button and then select a different one. Moving the edit and share functions to this new menu allows the setlist view to be more focused on performing. The only buttons left in the toolbar here are the Quick Add button, for adding a single song to your setlist on the fly, and the Edit button, which is a shortcut to edit the currently selected song. If you want to customize your layouts, you will no longer do this from the setlist view. Instead, there is a separate Layouts section in the Repertoire module, so we'll back up and go to that. In this list of layouts, all the layouts appear regardless of screen size and orientation, but those that match your current screen size and orientation appear above the divider line. You'll notice that this list shows which device a layout was created from and includes layouts from other devices. That's because BandHelper now syncs layouts across devices. By default, you will only see the layouts you created, but we'll see in a moment how you can share layouts with other users. When you select a layout from this list, you will see another intermediate menu with two different editing options. On the Edit Details page, you can rename, copy, export, or delete the layout, or share it with other users and other projects in your account by changing the user and project assignments. You can also set song selection and song completion actions for this layout. The song selection and completion actions used to be located in the account settings and were used by all the layouts on your device, but they are now separate for each layout, so you can create different layouts for different situations and give them different behaviors. On the Layout Edit page, this is where you can drag and drop to design your layout or add or remove items. This works basically as before with a few updates. First, the layout items are not active for editing until you tap them. Then the Remove and Resize buttons appear, as well as an Options button for some items. Second, you can now drag a selection area to select multiple items and move them together. And the grid that appears in the background can help you line things up. If you want to organize the information on your layout using design elements, you can now add box or line items. Boxes provide a background color behind the other items. And lines can be either horizontal or vertical depending on how you size them.
The biggest change here is with the song list. Instead of being permanently fixed to the left side of the screen, the song list is now a movable and resizable item like the others, so you can really change your layout around if you want to. To customize the appearance of the song list, you can tap its Options button, and then all the display options appear. Finally, you can select songs in the song list to load them into the layout editor to see how your layout works with different songs. There's one more new feature of the song list that's hard to explain but could be useful to you. Let's add a new layout. and fill up the screen without a song list. We'll also add the song list split view and song list full screen buttons. Then we'll add a song list. And notice that it appears layered under the other items. And then we'll edit the layout details and turn on the Hide Song List Song Selection action. Now we can go back to the set lists and view this layout. And we see that the song list appears on top with the other items hidden beneath it. But because of the song selection action, the song list disappears when I select a song and then I can use the two song list buttons to show it again. The song list split view button shows it at the size and position I chose for it, and the song list full screen button shows it at the full screen size. I could also use remote control actions to hide and show the list without touching the screen. The stage plots module has similar changes, with an intermediate menu to edit stage plots, and with the new behavior for activating and selecting stage plot items. There's one more option available when you select a group of stage plot items. You can now tap the Options button and select Copy Items. Then you can tap an empty area of this stage plot or navigate to a different stage plot and select Paste Items from the menu. This allows you to set up one section of a stage plot, like a drum set, and then quickly copy the same section to other stage plots. Some other changes are in the top toolbar. Tapping the foot switch icon now opens a window to manage remote control messages from devices that act like Bluetooth or USB keyboards. That includes most foot switches from AirTurn, PageFlip, and IK Multimedia. You can view incoming messages in this window to help troubleshoot your connection. 
If you chose to use the in-app announcements for things like availability requests and set list updates, these now appear under an announcements icon, which will be activated when new announcements are waiting. And all the app help functions are now under a new help icon in the top toolbar, which includes an about page and a new option to attach a screenshot to a help ticket directly from the app. Another area that has been reorganized is the remote control page in the settings. Previously, this page showed a list of supported remote control messages, and then you selected an action to trigger from each message. Now this is reversed, and you see a list of supported remote control actions. And you select an action first, and then one or more Bluetooth or MIDI messages to trigger it with. This should make it easier to see all the remote control capabilities of the app. It also allows you to trigger multiple actions with one message, or trigger the same action with multiple messages, like if you want to use a Bluetooth foot switch while practicing at home and a MIDI controller on stage. You can go ahead and configure both, and then either one of them will work. When you add new items to your account, such as a new song, you will now see only the most important fields initially, and then you can tap Continue to see all the fields. This should make the app a little less overwhelming for people who are adding data to the app for the first time. Finally, the app has some updated icons in the top toolbar and submenus. A bit of color in the menus. A new default font used throughout the app. And a new monospace font for chords and lyrics. This app has so much functionality that it deserves some visual updates, too. Those are the biggest changes that longtime users will notice. This version also contains some smaller changes and new features, and you can read the release notes for all the details. Thanks for watching, and I hope you like the updated design.